and also may be different according to the nature and processes in kidney or other parts of urinary tract. Also, it may be conservative, instrumental and surgical. Let's talk about them more detailed. Firstly, it's pain relief. Renal colic is very um, dangerous for patients and unpleasant, of course, and we should uh, relieve it. Uh, during the phase of strong pain, it's needed to take non-steroids anti-inflammatory drugs. Uh, also, it, you should know about diclofenac sodium, entomethacin, baralgin, um, ketanov, dexalgin, etc. And inhibitors of alpha-adrenergic adrenergic receptors can be also administrated. Also, it's used for men uh, who has secondary disease as rusted hyperplasia. Uh, pain relief can be treated by spasmolytic cocktails as papaverine, spasmolgon, nospa, and uh, uh, other ones. Cystinol and relicense uh, in drops is rather effective at the start of the renal colic. Also, you should remember that warm bath can relieve pain. And water regime is important in the urology too. Most people with kidney stones are able to pass them by themselves uh, within 48 hours by drinking plenty of fluids. So the smaller stone, the more likely it is to pass without intervention. So if you have problem such as stone in 5 millimeters, it may be passed by a patient uh, normal condition without any operation. Other factors that influence the ability to pass a stone include its pregnancy, prostate size, and weight, of course. So, the conclusion of this slide is stay hydrated, stay healthy. And here you can see the uh, pluses of drinking water and their regimen. Stone removal uh, needed uh, when in different cases. If it's less than 4 millimeters, it's 80% of spontaneous passage of it by itself. Uh, if it's more than 5 millimeters, it's only 20%. The overall passage rate of ureteral stones is, if this stone is proximal or kidney stone, the uh, percentage is 25. Mid-ureteral it's 45% and distal 70%. Here you can see the comparing between of different objects and the stone size from kidney. Uh, indication for active stone removal can be different. Firstly, it's a size, more than 6 or 7 millimeters. Also, you should remember that persistent pain despite adequate medication can be indication too. Persistent obstruction with the risk of impaired renal function and infection, the risk of pill, um, Pionephrosis or urosepsis, bilateral obstruction of kidneys, also it um, mainly common uh, with, with coral stones and solitary functional kidney. Remember that dipstick test, urine culture, antibiotic resistant test, information about blood transfusion, anti-aggregative therapy and calculation disorders, disorders can be checked before the operative processes because they are very important and if we don't know information about them, it may cause different complications and lateral conclusion of the operation. Treatment with salicylates should be stopped 10 days before before the planned stone removal. So this is one of the most important parts which uh, is connected uh, to cardiology and uh, information about that. Indications to surgical operation, it's a persistent pain that disables patient. Hydropyronephrosis, obturative anuria, hematuria, total one, carbuncle of the kidney, stone of the solitary kidney, and other ones. Here you can see the picture of uh, hydronephrosis. It's, um, uh, this is an increased amount of... Um, liquid in kidney due to obturation by stone and this is uh, um, one uh, part of operational process in our department. Big tail catheter is a key in uh, cases um, with urolysiasis they may be needed uh, this patient may be needed a pigtail catheter or J-stand to be placed 
uh, to reduce uh, complications and symptoms of pain, colic or other ones with the use of special instruments inserted through the urethra. So this is an uh, endoscopic operation. The physician reaches the bladder and advanced the catheter through the ureter to the kidney to fix it. This big tail detail is fixed into the kidney in calyces and uh, um, Stands, to, stands there about one month. Also, these stands can be uh, lost there for six months to relieve uh, their um, symptoms. Percutaneous nephrostomy. When pain relief uh, cannot be obtained by medical means, drainage by stenting or percutaneous nephrostomy or stone removal should be carried out. Here you can see this uh, stomas inserted to the kidney of the uh, upper calyces and uh, urine uh, outflows through them into the uh, in such sex. Uh, extracorporal shock wave lithotripsy. ESWL. When the patient has been adequately anesthetized, a, com a computerized X-ray machine is used to pinpoint the location of the stone within the kidney. Here you can see the mechanism of this action. Here are this uh, X-ray and these waves uh, that um, uh, goes to the kidney and uh, drop uh, uh, stones to the little particles and they outflow by themselves. Uh, these waves are uh, several hundreds to two thousand. They are administrated for the stone. Uh, this uh, uh, procedure has also contra administrations too. It uh, may be a pregnant patient, uh, bleeding disorders, aspirin intake, chronic kidney infection, scar tissue in the ureter after operation, previous operations, its testine and certain types of calcium stones. So the nature of stone is important uh, according to the mechanism of their removal. The next one you should remember is a percutaneous nephrolitotomy with or without lithotripsy PNL. It's a modern technique uh, along with refinements in endoscopic instruments and uh, advanced in fiber optics. It allows endoscopic manipulation in the upper urinary tract by the percutaneous approach. It's a little puncture function which doesn't uh, cause uh, bleeding or other uh, damages. So we can see uh, the mechanism of this procedure. You can punk puncture the skin and uh, to the renal pelvis and uh, hollow tube is uh, um, commonly used to remove the stone. Closed surgical procedure, uh, procedures are well used too. For example, it's a cystoscopic technique with the patient under anesthesia and with uh, fluoroscopic control of uh, stones in the distal ureter can sometimes be removed with a wire stone basket. Here you can see this one. Ureter renoscopy or URS, it's a vision with ureter renoscope. It's elastic one and it can be easily trapped in forceps. These stones can be trapped by forceps and safely extracted through the delayed ureter. Ultrasound and laser may be used for um, dropping this calculus uh, to less painful extraction. The next one of progressive uh, operation but opened one is pielolithotomy. Is used for removal of calcally confined to the renal pelvis. Minimal dissection of the renal sinus is usually needed. So we can see the problem that stone is located in the pelvis uh, nearly to the uh, kidney and urethral junction. So we incise this um, region and extract the stone. The next one we suture this one and the problem is solved. But also you should be uh, known about that, that um, renal helium should be uh, clipped these vessels such as vein and artery 
to see the well result after this operation. Also, this is a part of operation in our department, accompanied with visual technique. The incision should be made in a transverse direction, as far as away from ureteropelvical junction, to not to damage uh, renal parenchyma. The next one is open surgical procedures, or not open, or laparoscopic. For example, ureterolithotomy refers to the open laparoscopic surgical removal of a stone from the ureter. Here you can see also extraction of the stone from some part of ureter. Here you can see vessels to muscles and intestines. Uh, laparoscopic ureteral lithotomy is superior to open surgery now in reduced analgesic analgesic requirement, hospital stay, recovery, and cosmetic outcome. So it's more useful to use laparoscopic ones because open operation has such a large incisions, but laparoscopic one has three or maximum four ports, little incision. Um, or punctures, they allow to produce and uh, uh, have a result after small time and have more reliable recovery period. Types of the excess, if it's openly uh, provided, it's Federer's uh, uh, incision, if it's the upper, um, here you can see, upper uh, way to have an access to the uh, structure or cuculidze uh, incision or Pirogov's incision according to mid ureter and distal part of ureter. You can see stones of the left kidney and obstruction in this part of ureter. Open surgical procedures. It may be nephrectomy if it's uh, if this, the stone is very large or coral one, or it's non-functional kidney, or it's a pyelonephritis in a great stage, or tumor, or other ones. But we can talk about urolysis now. So the kidney is removed. Uh, this uh, procedure were, was commonly spread from 1961 one, and um, this operation was provided by Erastus Bradley Walcott in Wisconsin, USA. Also, it, it's nephrolithosomy. Um, here you can see incision of parenchyma with clip in the helium and systolithotomy. It's operation on the bladder. Here you can see the mechanism of incision and sutures of this one. If a person has great uh, uh, big uh, stone, it ca can't be uh, outflowing by itself. So surgery is produced. The next slides are some uh, pictures from operation. Uh, or in our department here you can see little punctures and uh, hand assist and incision for a doctor during laparoscopic uh, operation of nephroectomy. Uh, here you can see enlarged kidney during two infectious uh, problems and uh, stones and maybe tumor. Uh, you, you can see comparing with scalpel. So we remember that a normal kidney is about 11 centimeters, but this one is more than 15 and enlarged uh, with uh, infected tissues around. Here you can see ports for laparoscopic operation, um, optic techniques, and uh, another one's uh, stuff you can know about in our department. Uh, here is a result of our surgeons in operative operation theater. And uh, here you can see the suturing incision after hand assisting. It's a drainage from the uh, puncture. Here you can see one centimeter uh, probably a size and uh, it uh, has very cosmetic effect. Uh, it's the result of operation, exactly after operation. You can see one centimeter is about five or seven centimeters. This line is situated on the lower part of abdomen and it can be covered by um, clothes, trousers, etc. Preventive measures should be commonly used and uh, known by you. It's um, well um, uh, intake of uh, products, uh, healthy lifestyle, etc. And you should know it more than me. Uh, 
urine metabolism correction. Also, if we talk about uh, regulation of intake of products, we should remember about the content contain of uh, ions in them and uh, different substances which can enhance stone formation. Uh, also, it's intake of xanthin oxidase inhibitors about one month, uric uretics that uh, decrease um, concentration of uric acid in the organism and citrate mixtures one to six months. Also, it may be uh, fruits, or vegetables, uh, oranges, grapefruit, lemon juice, and uh, you should remember about water regime and about uh, two liters. And such products as listed here, such as fried and smoked meat, meat broth, coffee, chocolate, uh, alcohol and spicy dishes can increase the risk of stone formation. So keep a diet and be healthy. Oxalic acid metabolic correction is important too because uh, oxalates, oxalate uh, stones are dangerous too. Uh, intake should be full of vitamin B products, thiazide, diphosphonase, magnesium oxide, and citrate mixtures. And here you can see very tasty but commonly not used for intake in such cases, uh, such as milk, cheese, chocolate, green vegetables, and blackberry, strawberry, strong tea, and cacao. Uh, they can increase the risk of stone formation. Calcium and phosphate metabolism correction. You should remember about them. Uh, it's phosphonates, diuretics, antiazotamics, anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, in natural maybe drugs, stone removing and herbal remedies, acid balance correction. But you should know that it's on the diet and 100% result is not uh, very reliable. So it's only a combinative uh, measures you should remember about. Also, you can here uh, see such products as onions, guarana, fennel, artichoke, colt's food, and other one should be detected. Uh, don't remember about healthy lifestyle, it's a key. Uh, it's the end of our lecture. I hope it was interesting and informative for you. So the conclusion is be active, be healthy and be happy. And thanks for your attention. Uh, waiting for you for the next uh, lectures.